So apparently at some point, someone was like, hey, we should have a race in the summer, in the Southern California desert, and let's make it like 10 hours long. And apparently, a bunch of people every year decide, yeah, that sounds like fun. We'll participate in that. So the Glen Helen 10 hour endurance race is either a team race with two bikes and four people on a team, or uh, you can do it solo in the Ironman class, which is what I did. It's in the middle of June, it's hot, it sucks, and this is going to be my story of racing it solo in the Ironman class and coming from dead last to actually having a pretty good finish. All right, so we're just gonna play through this little highlight reel and I'm gonna give my comments on what's going on. Uh, so, so there's my friend Matt. Uh, we're at the start line, you can see here. Uh, the start is left hand on helmet, bike on. And that way when the guy flicks the flag you just reach your hand down to your clutch and you get going. So that makes kickstarters not at any disadvantage. Uh, I got a decent start, did a little look back there to see if I could swap over and grab a couple more positions, but it was ultimately in vain because I bobbled right there. But going into like the first section of the course, I was still in fifth place and I decided to screw it all up right there by running into a sand berm, which lost me a couple more positions. And at this point, there's, there's still a good handful of people behind me, so it's not all, it's not all bad. I just lost another one right there. Carson got me on the drone cam right there a little bit. Here we are going through the stadium truck track. It was uh, a little bit slick and snotty on top because they watered it and from the morning dew, so... It was a little bit slippery. And that, of course... <laughs> led to lots of roost blasting. You can see I'm just getting blasted with it. Luckily the GoPro didn't take too much, but my goggles just got totally clogged up. <laughs> you can see I'm just slipping around. I tried to take a different route just so that I wasn't following and getting r blasted by roost, but all I ended up doing was going into like fresh snot and slipping around so, so bad. Right here, I tried to pull a tear off on the straight, but I totally failed, and it resulted in me getting passed. But lucky for me, I got to see a freaking XR650R come flying past me, so... Uh, yeah, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm competing against you, but also that's an XR650R. Do you want to please roost me with that? that that'd be awesome. Because <laughs> it's just badass to see someone riding one of those beasts. And he did, he did roost the, the heck out of me. I got even worse clogged up in the goggles. At this point I could barely see. So I was kinda glad he went off course right there, because if it was right if he was on the course right there, he would have blasted me with so much more. <laughs> and then right here when when it all combined with the dust, I just couldn't see anything. I was totally blinded. I couldn't see at all. So I just slowed up. I was like, I don't want to run into someone, pull the tear off, clean the GoPro, and then that way I could get going again but I <laughs> screwed it all up again and basically went off the course. And I think I tricked some other people into going off the course too. Actually, I think I tricked like four people into going off the course. Or maybe just three. No, yeah, like four people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's this is me now in totally last place. So out of all the people in the race, there's like 60 something, I think 62. I am the 62nd like absolute dead last 
but uh, unlike in the six hour, in the six hour I also got pretty far back, not dead last, but I got way back and I, I let it get me discouraged because uh, I didn't realize how long these races are. But uh, in this one, I got 10 hours left. So I knew, don't let it, do not let myself get discouraged if I get way in the back. Just have fun reeling people in and just keep, just do not worry about how you're placing in the first parts of the race. Just get yourself a good pace established and everything else will take care of itself. So that's what I did. And I had fun reeling people in and passing for all sorts of positions. That's all. That's always fun. So you can see just how dusty it was, and that dust was just a double-edged sword. Because uh, when you're behind people, it's a deterrent and a motivator. It, as strange as that is. But yeah, it makes you, it, it can either make you back off or it can make you hunt a person down and catch them. It works both ways like that. Right here, I recalled from the six hour, this section was also in the six hour. Um, I was like, okay, we're about to be entering this like wide open road part, but I didn't want to just fly through it at first because I couldn't see anything and I didn't want to hit a barrier like I almost did back there. But as soon as it was clear, I saw they had a three for one special on positions right there and you just can't pass those up. So I took advantage of that. And yeah, this is the same part as they had in the six hour, the same road section, just uh, running it in reverse, basically. And then in here, this was like the siltiest, siltiest part of the course. It was so silty. Like, whenever you were in here with other people, it was like, God, you either you either had to get it past, or else you weren't going to be able to see. So it was gnarly in there. And this uphill, this uphill got me screwed over. <laughs> I, I, uh, I definitely uh, should have been more careful on that uphill, and we'll see in a sec what happens on the coming laps. But yeah, still charging, still trying to get positions. I basically uh, almost blew past that because with the dust I couldn't see that, that cone barrier right there. And actually later in the race I totally blew that turn like multiple times. But it's a good thing I didn't blow it on the first lap when I'm trying to like establish position because uh, it would have it been much worse to do it on the first lap. Especially coming up to this traffic jam right here. I could have got stuck right here. But look right here, we got some pushing and shoving going on. I wish I could have stuck around to see how that played out, but I wasn't about to to stand around and watch the entertainment. And whenever I'm behind someone, I just kind of poke around and try to take, like, different lines uh, to not get roosted out and to also, like, take it as an opportunity to find different lines, just make sure I'm finding all the lines I can, and, like, hopefully make one stick and just get around. But yeah, this trench, uh, it pretty consistently caused some traffic throughout the race. Every once in a while, people would go down in it, and a lot of the time, if they had a Kickstarter, they were just there kicking for like hours, <laughs> what seemed like hours, so um, people with Kickstarts would jam this thing up like constantly. But not nearly as bad as the six hour. Uh, where it was muddy in the trench. Uh, I don't know if I would have preferred the mud or the dust. That is a tough one to, to try to consider. The dust was gnarly and it ended up causing me like serious 
serious problems which I'm still dealing with right now as I'm making this video like over a week later. But the mud caused bike problems. So it's like you either you can have the mud with your bike problems or you can have the dust with your health problems. And of course, uh, people blew out this cone barrier right there, so everyone was just going past it and then doubling back. Or at least I was with those people. But uh, this time, this time the course maintenance, they, whenever they saw something getting blown out, they would go out there and they would put ribbon back up and put more cones. And yeah, they, they squared away all the blown out turns this time pretty quickly too. I don't think I ever came across something that I blew past twice in a row. It would at least take a couple laps for people to blow it out again, then I'd, then I'd blow it out. <laughs> or blow through it. So this is a... This is a person in the Iron Man class, so I am trying to get around. But it's tough in the tighter trails like this. There's there's not a whole lot to do, so when an opportunity like that shows itself, just I just hammer through it. But unfortunately that pass wouldn't last long, because coming into the tight trails again right here, I decided to stop and smell the flowers. <laughs> Someone straight ran over my bike. I'm glad they didn't uh, crash or anything. But actually, it was the same guy that I just passed. He just straight up got over me. Glad he got over me safely. That could have been very bad because my bike was covering like the entire trail. But yeah, actually stopping and smelling the flowers, you're not going to find a better time than like right now this year. Because I mean, look how crazy the bloom is out there. In the desert, the desert just had an amazing bloom this year. It's incredible. So I don't blame myself for crashing into him. Anyway, got that position back. And then got an overall position right there. And then I was pretty much, pretty much on my own until this uphill right here, where I just got around one of the people, one of the kids in the, uh, in the junior class, I guess it would be. I don't know what the class is. On that uphill. And that uphill, they ended up taking it out of the race and replacing it with a more difficult uphill. And then I was kind of on my own till I got caught on camera here at the track. The motocross track here is basically the last part of the course. You snake through it and then come into the finish chute and the finish chute leads you into the pits there's a 10 mile per hour speed limit in the pits and no passing unless you're pitting obviously I was telling my my buddy there eight miles for the course that's how long it was that way they could do race planning and stuff but then on the other side of the pits I stopped because Take it easy, careful around the way. My camera was coming loose, so I just got rid of it. I was like, screw it, we won't use that, whatever. So we ditched that. And that was the first lap, and here we are coming into the second lap. Still feeling good. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't in dead last now, so so that's good. But I still had a long long way to go if I was gonna get where I wanted to be so I told myself before the race I was like I'm not going home without some sort of trophy I was like if I'm doing 10 hours of this crap I'm getting something from it <laughs> other than just experience and laughs and stuff uh, and I I stuck to that I <laughs> I really wanted to get a position uh, a good finishing position Here I was on the second lap, and I, I was kind of on my own here, but then I discovered the dust trails and how much of a motivator they were. Uh, anytime I would run into a dust trail, I was just like, okay, there's someone out there ahead of me, like, not too far. So I'd use that as motivation. 
And then right here, notice I got crossed up in those water ruts and see how I like went side to side all the way across the, the road multiple times. Yeah, that, that uphill I, sh I should have been way more careful on. You'll see coming up. I know I've said, you'll see coming up, but next lap, you'll see coming up. Here with these people, I got past a couple times and just battled with them a little bit, but I'm, I made it first into the technical, well, the, the tight, tighter trails, which is nice. And then I got caught on the spy cam right there. Nice job with the spy cam, Carson. Looks good. <laughs> Entering towards the motocross track coming in on the motocross track to close out the second lap and everything was good I was just building building momentum still uh, trying to find like trying to find a good amount of pace and effort that was gonna be sustainable for 10 hours and I think I pretty much nailed it uh, uh, pretty early on I was able to establish that pace because I, I, I set it and then I didn't I didn't slow up tremendously after after I got my pace. Except for on this third lap, which you'll see why I definitely slowed up on this third lap. This third lap was my worst lap out of all of them. And it it involves crashing. I I wrecked. I'm actually glad I only had this one major incident right here. So yeah, he got caught up in the water ruts just like I did and did exactly the same thing that I did. So I should have kind of known if someone's going over into those water ruts, they're probably going to get going to get fishtailed and come swinging back over. I should have known. So I sh like I don't know, I blame myself for for causing that collision. I should have Ah, I'm so upset with myself, but okay, I'm good. Um, my knee rolled out of position. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. I, I did the same thing. Yeah, my knee rolled out of position when I first uh, crashed right there, and I could feel it tugging, like about to tear something internally. Uh, it's not. That's not terribly unusual for me, cause I've torn in that knee. I've torn the ACL twice and detached it from the bone once and then I've torn uh, like not full tears but partial tears on everything else in there so it's 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 not out of the ordinary for that thing to come out of position but yeah I just stopped in here stopped in here let them fix the bike because the rear brake was not working at all but then from then on I was just kind of charging. I spent like three hours just charging like really good. No, no big issues. And I, I came from 60 second position all the way up to um, 25th position overall. So I, I passed over half the teams, over the half the people doing the team races. Just like last time and even better than last time, I passed like well over half. But then here I am at like four hours or something, and I just hit a freaking wall. As soon as it was, as soon as it was near noon, it started getting freaking hot, and I was struggling. I kind of put a pause on the charging and started just like drinking lots of fluids, and whenever I could, I would suck in water from my camelback and just dribble it down myself to try to cool myself off. Looking good man, got sick footage. Nice. Got the ambulance drivers to say die trying. Die trying! Nice! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome.
Bike's good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Take your time, dude. Yeah, Just ride you, smart, dude. ride to finish. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. A lot changes. A lot changes, right? Yep. Uh, this, man. No, no, you're good. <laughs> You'll get to that point. Remember last time you were like, oh, this is horrible, and then it got good. It was getting rough. It was definitely getting rough. Reward, man. Yeah. And unfortunately, I had no room to breathe because I'd worked my way up to fifth position and then was battling with the same guy for fourth and fifth position for like six hours or something we were battling. Just back and forth and we were giving each other no room to breathe. Just, oh man, it was the worst. <laughs> Neither of us would let up and we were, uh, I was dying. That dude got every, ounce of energy out of me. I was dying so bad. So here we are at one hour remaining. One hour remaining and they just told me... Did you pull the rubber piece out? They just told me I have 40, a 40 second gap ahead of the guy behind me. With one hour remaining. So it's way too close for comfort. All I want to do is like chill and finish the race, but I can't because... <laughs> because dude is about to pass me. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to keep... This, this guy and I, we kept fighting the whole dang way. And it was the gnarliest. It was the gnarliest, dude. <laughs> oh. I really had to pee, but because the guy was 40 seconds behind, there was no stopping for to pee. No. An hour left, 40 seconds behind, no. We're, we're, we're finishing this out, and I held it in until it naturally came out. I couldn't hold it <laughs> anymore. At this point, I was, I was trying to keep a good pace, but really, like, look at me. It was all about just keeping the bike upright. There was no more there was no more pushing for good lap times or anything like that. It was just trying to stay upright and not have to lift that freaking heavy bike. <laughs> Cuz every time that would happen, it would sap energy like crazy. So look, like crawling through that stuff crawling through the turns. Absolutely just crawling just to stay upright. He just told us two more laps around. And I hadn't been passed. So <laughs> honestly if I got passed I was probably gonna give up. I was gonna be like well you got it have fun. <laughs> But I didn't get past, so I had to just keep struggling. And look at me, just getting so sloppy. Just getting so sloppy, trying not to fall. And just thought you should know I was peeing myself again right there. <laughs> Luckily, towards the end there, the sun was going down. So there was some shade and it wasn't like cooking my insides anymore. And here's the white flag, which is so nice to see after like nine hours and 40 minutes of racing. They just told me like 10 minutes remaining or whatever. So what I didn't know was that when I went through the white flag, those were like the last moments of the white flag so shortly after I put the, shortly after I got the white flag, everyone else started getting the checkered flag. So I really didn't need to be racing super hard on this last lap, but I was. <laughs> My last lap, I was like, we're gonna freaking 
just finish this out. But really the people behind me were finished and I could have just cruised, but I didn't know that. There was no way for me to know that. I almost hit the fence here with my with my handlebar. That could have been real bad. And then a bird decides to hit me. Like, look at that. It went right into my goggles. On the last lap, I get hit by a bird. And then here I am just crawling to the finish. The last go around through the motocross track, just crawling to get there. Just keeping the bike upright and finishing it out. There's no one behind me because they all got the checkered flag. It's just, it's just me. <laughs> I mean, there were a couple people behind me, but not in my class. Man, you look like you got the scars to prove it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done. I bet. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. Did I do it? You did it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. How do you feel? I feel like I'm never doing that again. <laughs> you will. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Ready to iron down the 24? <laughs> no. You gotta ask me that like three months later. Yeah. <laughs> I pissed myself twice. You pissed himself twice. <laughs> I was like, if I stop, I'm gonna lose. Yeah, why not? Dying yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell we gotta yeah, eat. We gotta eat somewhere. I'm oh, starving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of it, with the official results, I had come in fourth place in the Ironman class, which is amazing. Uh, that is exactly what I was looking for because that <laughs> that is the last position that they decided to give an award to. So I came home with my freaking award. I told myself I wasn't leaving there without an award and I managed to make it happen. Although I am still, or now, still several days later paying the price for that. Uh, I'm in all sorts of bad shape. When I got home, I was coming up the stairs and I made it like halfway. And then all of a sudden I was out of breath and I wasn't gonna make it. And it just started coughing crap up and uh, basically my my lungs filled with mucus um, there was a bunch of dust in there trying to do damage to my lungs and my whole body just went into like this defense mode like full-on sickness immune response defense mode and yeah my lungs filled up with mucus and I started I was I've been hacking it up uh, eventually got this nice sinus infection going on my ears ache I've had a sore throat for like seven days now my tonsils were super inflamed but finally now they are going down yeah I've just been I've been in bad shape it's been gnarly uh, I would say the suffering after the race has been so much so much worse than the actual race uh, this is the, the longest that I've been this badly sick at ever I think but yeah it's all good I am I am fine paying this price because I got my freaking trophy in the Iron Man class so I wanted to end up placing in the Iron Man class so uh, getting an award position which I got the honorable mention fourth position award. <laughs> so I'm 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 cool with that next time we'll do better but I'm cool with that for now and then my other goal was to like the six hour beat over half the people doing the team race and I fell short on that goal and I know exactly why it was my mental game I, I need to I need to freshen up that mental game um, in this one I really started to fall apart towards the end this time I had it squared away for the first half very much unlike the six hour where I struggled in the first half and then got it squared away for the second half. This time I was good for the first half, like really strong, and I just need to figure out what I need to do to keep myself from falling off the edge on that second half because that's what got me. That's the reason I didn't achieve that 
that goal of beating half the teams. So I ended up 36th overall out of 61. Yeah, I didn't achieve my goal of beating half the teams, but I was close. You know, a couple more positions, I could have had it. I actually had fought back up to 25th position during this race. So I went from dead last, which would be 61st, I guess, 61st position, and I fought my way back up over like the course of three or so hours to 25th position overall. And I should have done what I needed to do to stay there. So I'm a little disappointed with myself that I didn't pull that out. So next time I will achieve that goal. Uh, I will still have that same goal for next time and we'll go get it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't normally watch my videos, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I do, I'm kind of just experimenting with a bunch of different types of racing like this. So um, if you enjoy seeing the various types of racing like this, then yeah, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you around.